grab your platform flip-flops and your packs and purses because today we're going to the freaking mall, babies. <laughs> Welcome to window shopping. Today, we're gonna be taking a journey through one of the most requested shops for window shopping in window shopping history, and that is Forever 21. We're finally getting around to the Forever 21 window shopping, and it's wild that it took me this long because Forever 21 is actually the reason window shopping exists in the first place. I used to shop at Forever 21 online a lot, and I would always be so struck by how completely hideous some of the stuff on the site was and I'd be you know on my laptop alone shopping and I would just start riffing out loud about how hideous some of this stuff was and then one day I was doing that on Torrid and I decided to record it the rest is history I haven't shopped on February 21 in quite a while so I'm not familiar with the current state of the plus size section. So I thought, why don't we explore that together? Now, considering the popularity of Forever 21, I feel like before we get started, it is prudent to issue a disclaimer much like I did for the cider video. Forever 21's a popular place. There's a non-zero chance that I might make fun of something that you own. Hell, there's a non-zero chance I may make fun of something you're wearing right now. You know what? If we want to really run the numbers, there's a non-zero chance I might make fun of something that I own. I don't know what all's in there. I just want to say, if during the duration of this video, you find yourself getting mad at me, oops, let's get started. First on the chopping block is this, the self-love graphic tee in lime black. Self-love is the best love. With a little butterfly on the eye. Aw, isn't that charming? Isn't that cute? Self-love is the best love. Okay. It sounds like whoever dreamed up this shirt has never observed the love between a parent and the pet they swore they didn't want. The love between two people who hate the same person. The love between unfunny people and making vegan jokes. The love between children and ripping up handfuls of grass every time they're sitting outside. The love between me and those soft, baked frosted cookies that everyone hates. Hold on. No. Yeah. Yeah. Loft house. Sweetheart, these are scrumptious and I do not care what you have to say about it. If you don't like these cookies, that's more for me, right? But I'm just saying, self-love is the best love. What about me and loft house cookies? Compared to self-love, at least with me, there's no contest here. I do love myself at least one day out of every week. But I love those cookies 25-8, you know? Just like mathematically, I spend more time loving Loft House cookies than I do loving myself. So really, for me at least, is self-love the best love? Which I guess brings us back to the central question of window shopping, which is not necessarily is this article of clothing good, bad, or ugly? but would I wear it? And in this case, no, because if I wore it, I wouldn't be being honest. I haven't had these cookies in over a year because around Halloween 2020, I was grocery shopping with my roommate and I bought myself a package of these, but they had orange frosting because it was Halloween. And um, within one day, within one, not even a full day, like one 16 hour period, they were gone. They were gone inside of me. And it, it's just not, not cost effective, right? It's not cost effective for me. Oh, they're so good. Oh, ho, ho, ho. sneaky, Forever 21. In searching for another graphic tee, I found this, the National Geographic graphic tee, the National Geo graphic squared tee. Now you might think like, okay, fine, whatever. No, no, they're being sneaky. They're being sneaky here because look what's on the t-shirt, Mount Everest. This is very underhanded Forever 21. Slipping me a shirt with my favorite mountain on it while I'm in the middle of filming a window shopping, trying to sway my opinion. Listen, just because I have personally watched every single documentary about Mount Everest ever made, just because I have all of Into Thin Air basically memorized, and just because I happen to sleep soundly and peacefully in my bed every single night under the watchful eye of my Mount Everest poster does not mean I'm gonna go easy on you, Forever 21. God, she looks so beautiful in that picture though, doesn't she? Mount Everest is so frightening and so lovely. God, you could not pay me to even attempt to climb Everest. 
I know if I ever tried, which I wouldn't, but if I did, I would obviously die. And I love Everest too much to pollute her with my silly little corpse. Why do climbers really die on Everest? Because it's cold up there. There's less oxygen. You're not supposed to be there. Like, what do, you, what do you mean? I'm obsessed with Mount Everest. I love it. I love looking at her. She's so scary. <laughs> oh my God. Wait. I love looking at her because she's huge and intimidating and scary and tall. Is that why people like me? Is that why people watch me? Am I your Mount Everest? Better not try to climb me or I'll kill you. Twinning. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Plus size marble print mini dress. I absolutely adore that Forever 21 is out here with the plus size knockoff of that green house of sunny dress two summers after it's popular. Thank you. We can finally look kind of on trend. That is just great. Thank you. I actually don't hate this dress. I don't love that the bust and the body of the dress are segmented by this seam. That being said, I think this dress is cute. I love green. I love green clothes. I'm in a big green phase right now. And I think this looks really nice. I would wear this. I'd probably look really good in this. But unfortunately, the back cutout means that I'd have to go sans brassiere in it. And that's not something I do for any garment under any circumstances because I don't want to flood the city I live in with under boob sweat. I just gotta talk about these plus size floral print shorts for a half second. They're fine. I like printed shorts. I haven't worn flowy shorts like this in a while, but I kind of want these because I had a pair of black background daisy print shorts like this when I was a sophomore in college. Here's photographic evidence. Shorts, floral print. Fun fact about this photo is that it was taken when little teeny tiny baby 20 year old me was experiencing my very first hangover. Aww. But I got rid of those shorts at some time in the past couple of years and probably for good reason, like as soon as I started gaining weight after college, my entire two cheek combo was hanging out the back of them damn shorts. So I really couldn't wear them anywhere. But this is like the grown up version of those shorts. Oh, I don't know. I might have to pull the trigger. There is nothing like a nostalgically charged purchase to make me completely disregard anything even resembling a budget. So we're gonna put that on the back burner for now. Oh my God. Plus size floral dress and cardigan sweater set. Five people have bought this recently. Were they all running a mega church? Like this is something else entirely. This fit is for like the final boss of pastor's wives. The person who wears this outfit every single year on Easter, as soon as the clock hits midnight, her eyes shoot open and she's like, he is risen. This is an outfit for somebody who is fully planned for the rapture. She knows where she's going and she knows where you're going. And she just hopes you're okay with that. Plus size, A-line shirt dress in teal. Something about this is off. I can see the value in a good shirt dress. Can be fancied up for nights out, can be professional, can be casual. I totally get it. This one, you know, in particular is a nice length. Uh, it could be fitted to the model a little bit better, but you know, it's a fast fashion site. But I like the wide sleeves. I like the shape that they give the upper part of the dress. However, as you heard, Something struck me about this dress as being off and I realized it was the color. And what I realized about the color that felt off to me is this, I figured it out. This dress looks like the base layer of a World War II field nurse outfit. Hold on. I mean, I mean, like, dude, come on, come on, dude. Like, it's not exactly the same. There's some key differences. It's shorter, the sleeves are bigger, but this color says combat medicine to me. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what to say. That is a truly versatile dress. You can wear this piece to a date at the movie theater or to the European theater. Basket dress, basket dress, dress that looks like a basket, dress that is the same color and texture as your average basket, basket dress, basket dress. Hey, you know, cute couples costume idea, a cottagecore girl 
and her basket that she gathers flowers and berries and fucking grass and pine cones, whatever cottage court girls like in, you know? Actually, wait, yeah. Like if you buy this dress, you're so close. All you'd need to do is just wear like floral accessories, maybe a flower crown, tuck some flowers into the bust line of the dress right here. Yeah, you know, this is actually kind of growing on me, my little basket cottagecore couples costume. Someone whose girlfriend owns a sulky puff dress or something from Love Shack Fancy, buy this basket dress and do that couples costume. I want to see it. Oh, yes. God, what is happening here? <laughs> Plus size frayed denim tube top with accompanying frayed, and I'm using heavy air quotes there, jeans big old baggy ones like the kids like and then there's also a matching jacket the plus size frayed denim jacket there's a lot of creative freedom here that i don't know should have been granted <laughs> finally an outfit to wear if you're gonna be hanging out with someone you cannot fucking stand and you know they have really bad trypophobia look at all of these little holes these little punctures this is so silly looking this is not frayed this is annihilated what the f <laughs> ah! <laughs> i can see the value in a denim tuxedo outfit and i like this jacket i do genuinely but like why did it need to look like it's been shot with a bunch of tiny machine guns why was this outfit executed via firing squad? Look at all these little holes. I cannot think of a less comfortable outfit to walk around in than a denim corset style strapless tube top and mid-rise baggy jeans. Just imagining myself constantly having to hike up a tube top and constantly having to hike down my jeans so I keep that baggy, low-waisted look. Sounds miserable. <laughs> also, obscuring my hips like that and wearing a tube top that's gonna be falling down is sort of just like asking to look like I'm melting everywhere I go for the entire day. And I already look like I'm melting enough on my own, thank you very much. My whole body is just sag. Underneath all my clothes, SAG Awards, red carpet. An Ozzy Osbourne graphic t-shirt? What is the Venn diagram of people in the market for an Ozzy Osbourne graphic t-shirt and people buying from Forever 21? Who is that person? I love, I love when fast fashion graphic tees have fake fading on them to look vintage. It's the most obvious thing in the world. It's so funny. Oh my God. What, was this like in your uncle's garage for 15 years? Yeah, I'm so sure that you've had this t-shirt since 1988. Who is the per- I know this is just like an outfit for this sh shot and like this isn't a real outfit, but like I want to meet the girl who wakes up in the morning and is like, what am I going to wear for today? What is the outfit that I'm going to face the world with? Got it. I'm going to wear my distressed black denim cutoff shorts, my Fashion Nova knockoff square toe translucent strap blister city heels, and my vintage Ozzy Osbourne at the Nassau Coliseum 1988 no rest for the wicked faded t-shirt. Uh, this will really get me taken seriously at jury duty. <laughs> oh, hell yes. This is early 2000s hot girl. Full stop, this whole outfit is. I love it. This is the last scene in a 2000s rom-com fit. This is the Disney Channel star attending an event red carpet in 2007 fit. This is the fit your friend's older sister's wearing the first time you meet her when you're 10 and she's 14 and the firm line between being a preteen and being a teenager is made clear to you for the first time. Either this exact outfit or some combination of layered tank tops, softy shorts rolled all the way down, and Uggs. One of the two. Looking at this picture, looking at all of these pictures, especially this one though, makes Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson start playing in my head. Not the single song Breakaway, the whole album. Every track on it simultaneously is playing in my head when I look at this image. This is what, this is who I thought that I would become, just full mind, body, soul. I thought I would just become this picture when I turned 13, when I was a kid. My whole childhood, I fully thought, okay, I wake up on my 13th birthday, two things will have happened. One, I will finally have been given access to the Neopets forums. Two, I will look exactly like this. Would I wear any aspect of this? 
No, I don't like these jeans. I think there's too much going on here. I don't like the stitching. I don't like when jeans have little denim belts. And this shirt has a little bit too much going on to have the sort of effortless boho chic thing it's going for actually work. But I like the idea of it. And I think if these pieces were a little bit more refined, I would like this outfit more. I don't have anything bad to say about these shoes, except for the fact that Forever 21 doesn't carry my shoe size. So get fucked. Although it's probably a good thing they don't because the fact that Forever 21 and really any fast fashion store that sells shoes like Charlotte Russe, H&M, things of that nature in a mall, the fact that they never carry my size is the only thing stopping me from having spent all of my money at those stores when I was younger. Like... <laughs> I would walk past the shoe section at Charlotte Russe, just aisles upon aisles of the gaudiest, chunkiest, brightly colored leopard print spiked stiletto platform wedge block heel monstrosity strappy heels ever. I would walk by them and just whine like a little dog because I knew that the highest size I'd ever find was 10. Plus size breast graphic tee. Oh my God. Do not let Caroline Calloway know Forever 21 is selling this. She would go ballistic. I smell an IP lawsuit on the horizon. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. Forever 21, count your days. I love t-shirts with boob designs on them. It's so like innocently edgy. I'm looking for that picture of Cara Delevingne in the boob window t-shirt. There it is. <laughs> this t-shirt with the boobs on it. Dude, the way I would see this on Tumblr every week in like 2011, everybody was obsessed with her in this goddamn t-shirt. It's so fun. I love how much everybody's like, oh, <gasps> Just like scandalized by boob t-shirts. I think this is actually fun. I would wear this. Or like those t-shirts you see stores start selling around Halloween with like two skeleton hands, like holding up someone's boobs. They're so silly. I love it. It's just like a fun time where it's just like, yeah, aren't tits hysterical? They are. That's why I'm so funny. Humor is stored in the bosom. Whenever I see boob t-shirts and any other t-shirt that's like not actually offensive, but just sort of offensive adjacent, I think about this one time when I was a kid, I was on an errand with my mother and I was in the car just sort of like watching, waiting for her to come back. And this guy who was probably around his 20s was just walking to his car and he was wearing one of those French Connection UK shirts that just say FC UK on them in the center. And I freaked out because at this point I didn't have a great grasp on swearing or reading. And I thought he had the F word on his shirt, which as far as child me knew was illegal or at the very least, a finable offense. Just fun, just fun to reflect on. <laughs> I was such a neurotic kid. Let's talk about another shirt. This is the plus size color block pocket shirt. Oh wow, I didn't know Teddy Fresh was moving into office wear. Way to diversify your offerings, guys. Color blocking is very valid. It can be done well, but on a button up, it's, in these colors, these sort of faded colors with the pinstripe, it's very 80s clown. Like clownish and cartoony, but also a distinct Reaganomics vibe. The intersection of goofy and yuppie. It's like if American Psycho was about a guy who did improv and performed magic tricks in his spare time instead of having an 11 step skincare routine and vigorously exercising in his tidy whities Still the murder though. Also still the fascination with Huey Lewis. Hey, Paul, Christian Bale is such an amazing actor. <laughs> he knew exactly what he was goddamn doing when he made Howl sound the way that he sounded in the English dub of Howl and the Castle. I was in the movie theater trembling, quivering in my seat. I was like, what? I've never heard a man sound like this before. I need to leave. Actually, can everyone else leave? Can everyone please leave the theater for 10 minutes? I need to observe something. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, okay, Jesus Christ. Plus size plaid mini dress. I actually don't have any issues with this dress. I'm just floored by how gorgeous this model is. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. She looks amazing. 
I hope she's proud of these photos. Like if I were her and I had, oh my God, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I would have these on every single, these would be my profile picture on every social media site ever. I would print these out and mail them to my enemies. Just like, hey bitch, just so you know, I still look like this. Have a blessed and prosperous one. Okay, let's be mean again. Plus sized clip dot ruffle dress. The possibilities are truly endless with this little number. I get what they were trying to do. I see it. I understand the vision, you know, just like romantically scampering through a field in this off the shoulder, wispy dress, just twirling, getting your tuck everlasting on. I understand. But sometimes I wonder if anyone at any point in the process of this dress being designed and conceived notice that it's just kind of a wad of white fabric. It looks like a clean tampon two seconds after being dropped in a glass of water. I don't mind a smocked waist. I don't mind a smocked waist, not at all. It makes it way easier to fit into things and it makes it harder to actually outgrow your clothes. But something about this dress does not work. It looks unintentional, it looks heavy. It looks like it's not gonna stay where you put those shoulders. This looks like the kind of dress where if you move your arms at all, they are up at your neck, strangling you and making you look like a doily. And I don't like that. I know that because I have an off the shoulder black dress from Forever 21 in this same fabric and it does do that all the time. Do I still wear it? Of course I do. It makes me look like a hot, sexy vampire lady. Why would I stop? <laughs> I just won't raise my arms. I'll just have my devoted fans get anything from high shelves that I need, so. Not an issue. The plus size chevron print cami. Chevron, God bless, okay. Um, this outfit, all the same jokes that I made earlier about the 2007 Disney Channel star red carpet, but changed the year from 2007 to 2010. I'm gonna pull up a picture of me when I was 16 wearing what is functionally the exact same outfit as this image, the same thing. This is the sort of thing that plus size people complain about all the time, styles being offered to us that are very, very consistently and chronically and completely stuck in the past. A billowy chevron print tank top is very 2010s in a way that I personally find nostalgic and truthfully a little bit comforting. As someone who is not obsessed with my stomach at all times, sometimes a flowy tank top is just what I need, right? But it's definitely a reminder of how little effort most major clothing retailers are willing to make in pursuit of progressing plus size clothing forward as fashion evolves over time. As comforting as this outfit may be, or as cute as it may be to some people subjectively, clothing is nothing if not subjective, this is stylistic stagnation exemplified in one singular outfit. I don't like distressed jeans. You gotta leave a little bit something to the imagination. Like, yes, will I have my boobs hanging out of whatever I'm wearing? Of course I will. They're comfier that way, right? But my knees are a private area and the only people who should see them are myself, whoever performs my autopsy, any doctor taking my reflexes, and God. Plus size cut out tie back sweater. Okay, a cut out tie back cropped sweater. Inoffensive from the front, incomprehensible from the back. I appreciate the representation of body diversity here. I'll just say that up front as evidenced of course, by the fact that this looks wildly different on each of these two models. Option one right here, we have our shoulder blades covered just like Jesus would want and are sporting a demure mid back window down here, right? Okay. Perfect for allowing all that back sweat to gracefully evaporate over the course of the day, framed with two sad, saggy little fabric jowls. <laughs> Delightful. Option two, however, for the more daring, we'll say, throw convention to the wind and show off your whole back. It's like you accidentally leaned against a freshly painted wall, but if the wall was painted with sulfuric acid and the bottom back of your shirt just dissolved into nothing. I'm not as virulently anti cutouts as I used to be, but I don't know if I can ever truly get behind a back cutout, especially on a sweater of all garments. A little dress, sure. A little sexy, whatever. A sweater? Where do you live where this is an acceptable distribution of fabric? 
Where do you live that you need all this fuzzy, wuzzy, warm coverage in the front and you're playing fast and loose with your back. This area gets so cold so easily. If you're walking around outside with this on in the winter time, a gust of wind is gonna snake its way up the back of your jacket, touch the small of your back, and make you feel like you're getting to second base with Snow Miser. I cannot get behind this. It just seems like it'll lead to a lot of unpleasant shivers anytime you sit on a cold chair, you know? Oh my God, also, can you imagine wearing this sweater on the bus or subway and leaving a dappling, a smattering of back sweat droplets on your seat when you get up? I never recover from the embarrassment. And I am already one of those people that feels like anything I do in public is abjectly humiliating, even if it's like literally just the most normal thing ever. Like I'll walk downstairs too loudly in public and be like, fuck, everyone's laughing at me. Like girl, no one cares. <laughs> You know what I think is so embarrassing that's literally not embarrassing in the slightest at all? It's like such a normal thing. When I reach for the support beam on the train and the sleeve of my jacket is like down here and my whole wrist is just like out. It's so embarrassing, why? It makes me feel like a giraffe trying to blend in with a bunch of gazelles. <laughs> It makes me feel like Hagrid trying to go shopping at a limited two. Or also anytime the sleeve of the shirt I'm wearing is longer than the sleeve of my jacket, humiliating. Or whenever I'm wearing a cardigan that's longer than my jacket, you just have little cardigan tails sticking out of the bottom of your jacket. Why is that embarrassing? It's literally just clothes. Being outside is really difficult for me. Um, ooh, another little pair of shorts. These are the plus size happy face floral shorts. You might be wondering, happy face? Where? Literally where? These, these are happy faces. These are fucked up little flowers with scary smiley faces on them. But I wouldn't blame you for not knowing that because my God, this design is so tiny. Be honest with me. What, if anything, did you think these little flowers were when you first saw these shorts? It's such a sparse design. It's so funny to me. Why were they so stingy with these happy little flowers? What is up with this distribution rate? <laughs> From a distance, these look like you were wearing a pair of normal plain cream shorts to a barbecue and you kept dropping globs of relish on your lap as you tried to eat your hot dog. Or that you were rolling around outside in a pair of clean plain cream shorts and got a bunch of hyper localized grass stains. Sure. My shorts might look like I was waiting in line for Splash Mountain at Disney World and the toddler behind me kept picking his nose and flicking his boogers onto the back of my shorts, but hey, at least I look summer ready. Oh my God, my friend is back. Hey girl. This time she's sporting a very different garment. Look at these little butterfly jeans. Oh, the sweater's hideous, but the jeans, the jeans though. I swear to God, I had these exact same pants in fifth grade and trust me, I'm not here to insult these pants, all right? Embroidered and printed jeans were a lot of fun. I outgrew them pretty quickly because I was 5'8 in grade eight and they didn't make these in adult lengths, but I cherished the brief few years when I was short enough to wear them. This kind of reminds me of what I talked about several, several window shoppings ago about how the Y2K section of a particular clothing website was just 80% butterfly printed clothing. I know butterfly motifs were around in the 90s and the 2000s, but like we did wear other clothes. You don't have to just immediately default to butterflies. What's the name for being afraid of butterflies? It has an, it's like lipididophobia or something. I'm not gonna look it up. I hate looking up phobias because Google is like, oh, did you wanna see this picture of a spider while you're researching arachnophobia? Actually, I didn't, but I appreciate that you think I'd want a well-rounded search result, but oh my God, I'm gonna cry now. Lepidopterophobia. Motophobia is the fear of moths alone. Do you guys have any phobias you think I should know about? I love phobias, I love researching phobias. My favorite phobia is the fear of long words. Cause long words, like long ass words are actually kind of creepy to look at. I don't know why. Like whenever I look at the word pneumonotra microscopic silicovacanoconiosis, I'm like, stop it. 45 letters? <laughs> Hippopotamonstrosesquipedaliophobia is the word for the phobia 
of long words. Why is that creepy that it has so many letters? It's just so long, right? It's sort of like an uncanny valley thing, but from a linguistic angle. For a lot of languages, a lot of spoken languages, words are not usually that long. So when we see a word that is that long, but it's in the language we speak, it's like, why are you trying to imitate what words in our language look like. Kind of like with Uncanny Valley stuff, it's like, this is so close to human, but something is very off in a way that I can't shake and it's making me itchy. How did we even get here? Butterflies, butterfly phobia. I get off topic. Who the fuck is buying a Malcolm X graphic t-shirt from Forever 21? Something about that does not feel like good praxis. I don't think Malcolm would like that very much. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's my friend too. Oh, sweetheart, sweet baby girl, angel, honey pie, cutie, sweetheart. Okay. I don't think I can support you through this one. I don't know if I can do that. I'm just kidding. Of course I can support her. All of the models in window shopping are my personal friends. In the ugliest color combo I can think of, we've got a long sleeve tee sporting the text, you are going to fill in the blank, it. And on the back, just in case you thought the fun was over, we've got Trust me, the kerning here makes me want to pronounce this differently. Um, hold on a minute. Trust me. Uh, first of all, I resent wholeheartedly that they're telling me to fill in the blank. I gathered that based on the big empty line Forever 21. Do you think that I need that clear of a directive? I understand how blanks work. I had to go to the hospital a lot as a teenager and I have filled out thousands of those little medical surveys. I'm an expert, do not give me directions. That being said, a question. What are they expecting me to fill that blank in with other than do, kill? Like you're going to kill it maybe? You're gonna ruin it. You're gonna fail it. You are going to disappoint it. Trust me. Are you supposed to white out the gray fill in the blank lettering right there? before you add whatever text you're going to add to the shirt because obviously you can't buy the shirt and leave it unfinished. What would the point be? If so, not selling this shirt in tandem with a fabric marker in a matching shade of forest green was a missed opportunity for them. Not that it would have made me any more likely to buy this ugly -ass shirt, but it could have been fun if you left the line blank and actually had people write it in. Wouldn't that be a little bit cute? A little stupid, a little cute? That's kind of the whole thing behind Forever 21. That's the whole ethos. This is the note on which we will leave things for today. This was fun. It's always fun. As always, let me know if there are other stores you would like to see me window shop or if there are stores I've already window shop that you'd like to see me window shop again. Thanks again for watching my video, but before you leave, I'm going to need you to do a quick favor for me. You are going to have an amazing day for me it. Trust me. If you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok at NisiPisa. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to use code NisiPisa for 10% off at checkout at your local mall food court. Bye!